Hi everybody, welcome to the Todd and Aaron daily stream. I'm not talking to this lady because she wants to kill my pumpkins, but first, the video. Hi everybody, welcome to Todd's Test Kitchen. I'm a cook, I cook for my family and friends. Today, as always, I want to cook something a little different. I have a Boston butt. Actually, it's true, because I'm from Boston and I have a butt. But we're talking about a pork shoulder, we're talking about a picnic roast we're talking about a boston butt it's all the same thing and i am so tempted there's every strand in my soul that wants to make a carnita out of this but i'm not going to i saw a new recipe that i give it a try pork and apple there is i grew up having pork chops and applesauce on the same plate did you do this maybe it's just me um and i thought it's fall the leaves are changing here in utah why not try it so that's what we're going to do today. Now, um, it all starts off um, with my butt. This is what you're going to need. You need pepper, salt, apples that don't break down when they're cooked. We've got Dijon mustard. We've got some vegetable broth. We've got scallions. We've got bacon. We've got cider. We've got butter. One thing I want you to remember today is that I am making two of these. Now, some of the Quantities you see me putting in uh, are going to be twice the, the amount because last time I made um, what I make a beef beef shank right uh, I got like this much of it the next day I got there and I thought leftovers there were no leftovers there were round bones and that was it so I'm making two of them so one's going to have to go on top of the stove and one's going to go in the oven we're going to cook at 325. What I've always decided to do, what I always do, is I braise, and I always braise in a uh, Dutch oven. Now, the reason I do this is because the heat is all the way around it, because it all conducts the heat. And the other one is going to go in, too. So I am doing two of these, all right? So, and if you want a recipe on this, if you go online and say pork and apple, hundreds of them show up, some with cinnamon, others with, anyway... The point being is I kind of generalize about what, how much I'm putting in and kind of, eh, so I don't have a specific recipe. But first thing we want to do, see what I did there, but, um, is we want to cut uh, this into six, uh, six pieces because we're going to brown it. We're going to brown it, uh, which is going to be great. And why do you brown beef? I, I learned that I don't know everything. I don't know a lot. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. Um, bread is good. Toasted is toast is better. That's why we brown the meat. But first of all, we have to cook the bacon. Kind of sexy, isn't it? All right. So this would be about four ounces. Remember, I'm making two of these. Oh wait. Even sexier. All right, this is the part where you uh, uh, destroy your, your kitchen. Uh, basically, like we said, you're going to take the meat and you're going to put it into the bacon fat along with one tablespoon of butter. And you're going to go ahead and brown every side of it. Every side of it. Like I said, bread's nice. Toasted bread is better. More flavor. Um, and there's smoke. And you can't do it all at once, so you're going to brown, 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 and put it in the next batch goes in. Uh, and so that goes on until everything is browned off, and then you put it aside. All right, so I have now put the meat back in the pot one layer, leave some space in between them so they don't poach. And then in one hour, we're going to flip them over and add the bacon back. All right, two hours is up. Let's go check and see what we have. Oh, I think that'll work, don't you? The only thing left is the apples and a tiny bit of mustard. Let's get, let's get to the apples. You know, there's always a time like this that you kind of wish that you had uh, your mom or your grandma around, right? Because there was always someone, it might have been an aunt or something like that, but there was always a person 
in your crew who could peel an apple. And they would peel it like they would never take any of the flesh of the apple. And they'd feed it to us as they did it for pies and all that stuff. But doing this always makes me think of them. And they had those old fashioned retro aprons on, which aren't retro when they were wearing them, I guess. But there is always something about peeling an apple that just makes me think about them. All right, All right I've got six more to do. Now that you've destroyed your entire kitchen and your stove is covered with oil, uh, it is now time for the next step. And the next step is, my friends, is to add the shallots. By the way, cutting these is like worse than onions. So we're going to put these in now. Put them in now. We've lowered the heat. We're going to soften those. Next thing we're going to add is the apple cider. The apple cider, after those soften up, we've got two tablespoons of of uh, apple, cider, uh, apple cider vinegar as well. And <clears throat> this will go in as soon as the shallots are softened. <coughs> All right, two hours is up. Let's go check and see what we have. Oh, I think that'll work, don't you? The only thing left is the apples. And a tiny bit of mustard. Let's get let's get to the apples. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take out the pieces and put them in a deep kind of dish because there's other stuff that's gonna go in here. All right, and we're going to get the other pieces out. There we go. Now I'm going to put the rest of it in and skim afterwards. So I'm going to take the rest of the bacon that we cooked early. That's going to go in. Also, going into the pot, and you kind of may think that someone made this up, but... And we're going to do a little Dijon mustard, just a little bit like that. And then the apples. Now remember, I'm making two batches, so I'm only going to put half in. And that's probably too many, but I'm really excited about the whole apple thing. So we're going to let that go. And we're going to turn the heat back up on this, and we're going to let it cook down for a little bit. All right, just remember, it's all an experiment. There it is, mashed potatoes, a little chive on top. There are the apples, and there is the apple pork. All right, well, go ahead and try this out on your own. It's always an adventure, and I'll see you next time in Todd's Test Kitchen. Can I eat it now? Yes. It's not even the, even the end of September, and you want to kill my pumpkins in my garden that I've grown. Pinterest wanted us to do the Collard Haunted House terror, Tour of Terror oh, you know, of I our house at the 1st of September. Oh, now holy we... Pinterest. It's not even Halloween. No, it, it is Pinterest. I kiss up it's to them. It's 30 days away. If Pinterest wants something from us, we give it to them. Ah, whatever. We, we give it to them. Oh, so, yeah, just I need stick it in a mason jar and send it to them. Give me your pumpkins. All right, so anyway, uh, what do we want to talk about? That sounded weird. We want to talk about um, the, the Chinese Oh, man. Gentleman. Okay, now, if you've heard the terrible story uh, from last Friday, there was a huge tour bus of Chinese tourists. They were down at Bryce Canyon. Bryce Canyon. Apparently, it was the driver's very first trip. Terrible huh. crash. Four people lost their lives. A lot of injuries. But the real scary thing is you're sitting here going, 
I've got a bus full of people who are injured in pain and terrified who speak <laughs> Mandarin Chinese, and I don't. Speak so they it. put out a desperate call down to Southern Utah University, saying, "Do you have anybody in any of your departments to speak?" Brilliant. Um, and uh, God bless them, Jason Chang, who's this awesome kid. He had just come to uh, Southern Utah State University to study bilingual. I speak it because I'm from China. Uh, went over there, and he said it was heartbreaking. He says, "I know they can't speak English. I know they must be really panicked." And so he spent hours Scared. at the hospital acting as a translator later mm -hmm. um they it was heartbreaking because he says the bus crash victims were so stunned that it took them a while to get past what had even happened because they said but we are on a on a registered tour bus nothing right. should have happened and that right. is it i guess there are certain things where there's a a standard you i guess you never think anything can go wrong i didn't even think of the fact that if you're laying in a hospital bed and all this stuff is being done to you and you're being healed and, and taken care of that so many questions would be coming to you what are you doing why am I here? I don't remember. All of those things were happening, and they had no one. And, it's, and this kid's 21 years old, oh. but he dug in there, and he was there for hours and hours and hours until everyone had been seen. But what an amazing kid. So, Jason Cheng, you rule. All right, so I want to talk about the happiest place on earth, or is it? Kind there's, of. There's, every once in a while, a little story comes out, and it's, it it's deals with... Some of the harsh realities of dealing with the public. Well, I think anyone, you know, we, we all like save up to go to Disneyland or Disney World. It's a big deal. It's a big pressure and you want your kids to have the best time ever. And, but Disney World especially, they they have actually, they have mental health visits. They get five free psychological visits a year. And frankly, I think Donald, they need more. Donald gets five? There, because the employees go through insane things and they go, we're kind of the emotional punching bag. Because if you think about it, at Disney World on a big day... It can go. It can swell to the population of Reno, Nevada. It's like twenty-five thousand people. No, two hundred and fifty thousand people. Two hundred fifty thousand people. So it's unimaginable. But the thing that ticks me off, there's a couple. Like this one woman was angry. She didn't have a fast pass to the Tower of Terror, so she punched the employee in the face. Because and then wait, the rest of the story. This is what ticks me the, off. Wait, wait. Then goes to the control panel and starts pushing buttons. Which is like the most terrifying thing. Uh, you know, other things that that are irritating. One guy was staying at the Grand Floridian uh, Hotel. That's mm. 600 bucks a night. So he obviously felt like, well, I get to have it whenever I want it. So he screamed at the employee because he wasn't there for the right time for his fast pass. And she finally said, here, sir, why don't you just go in? That apparently was not enough. So he shoved her off the pathway and screamed at her. I'm not your slave. You don't tell me what to do. And told that the police that he felt like he'd been herded like a dog. It's a small. World. There's other things though that are awful, like like this one it's guy who who world. punched this girl in the stomach, one of the employees, because she wouldn't let his wife, who walked just fine, use the wheelchair fast line to get into the ride. Well, the employee happened to be pregnant. Now, this is the part that upsets me the most, though. None of these people seem to get arrested, and. This is what I hate. Disney leaves it up to the employee mm -hmm. to press charges. Now, you know perfectly well right. that if a monolith like Disney's going, oh, well, we're, we're going to let you decide, and you're on your own as an employee going up against somebody, right. Right. most people are going to go, okay, I, I'm just going to back off. I mean, think how many 24-year-olds you know that will be like, yeah, I'm going to take this on. I'm going to press charges. I'm going to deal with this. No, that's something that your company should be behind you for. You know, that's just, I'm sorry, but that's a cop-out. I think if I was goofy um, and someone did something like that to me, that I'd just haul off and... Well, the, the frustrating thing is, is that I've known this for years because we've had a couple of, of nannies who, tall, beautiful girls who actually were princesses down at Disney World, and they told us that all the costumes are heavily padded for a reason. Yeah. And I'm sorry, if you're assaulting a Disney princess, you are so you creepy are. that you need to be killed. I'm yeah. sorry. That's just weird. All so, right. I don't know. That just made me feel sad, though, that they didn't have their back better. Leaving it up to the employee. All right. Come on. I want to tell you something good. Yes, please. I want to tell you something good. This is kind of a cool story. I think it's an incredible story. So, this is, uh, it's in England, of course. So, he lives in Burnley. 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 His Burnley. name is uh, James Anderson. He is uh, 52 years old. He's a plumber. James. <clears throat> Self-employed, has his own store, tough times, store's going under. Mm -hmm. He closes it. Someone found out that he was going around doing plumbing work for free to older people who couldn't oh, pay. Okay. And so the word got out. And so 
this guy this is, is a guy no slouch. This is financial trouble, and not, yet he's still doing things free to this, help. And this people. is a this is a guy. This is a guy who has a business sense in this, and he said, "You know what I'm going to do?" And he got support, and people actually sent him money, and he didn't ask for it, and he turned it around, the money around, to help more people. And so he started a no profit plumbing company. He found widows who hadn't had hot water for two years. People with cancer, with leukemia, who were struggling by with no heat. He found all these other people. I and next thing you know, man. he did crowdfunding. And the money just kept coming in. And now he's getting requests from around the world. How do I do this in America? How do I do this in, in, in Australia? That is absolutely in wonderful. In France, in Germany. And all these different people are saying, your model role is incredible. Because if I'm saying I'm going to help a family in need, I will give you money. So he's got a charity business-based model that's working perfectly. He's created a nonprofit, so he can survive. And now he's doing this for yeah. everybody. I he asked by a, crowdfunding. He makes a good living. He hires other people to do the work as well as himself. And he is helping people. It is the perfect combination. I love seeing people who are good get rewarded for that because it doesn't happen enough. But to see good people truly get rewarded. And for someone like that, you're right, who automatically turns around like, well, now right. I can help more people. That's right. incredible to me. I think it is. And what a great model it is. I just think. You know, it really is genius. All right, so what would you do? This is my favorite oh, part. Love these. This is my new favorite thing. Uh, what would you do? I'm going to give you a scenario, and you have to tell me what you, you do. Okay, here it is. So a college student with his college student buddy, they go to New York. They save up and they put together some money. So they I have said, like 50 cents after we're gonna, tuition. We're going to go mess around in New York. It'll be great. Never been there. So the, the guy's aunt, aunt, uh, has an apartment there and she says, well, why don't you come in and stay with me? Thank you. Just for the weekend, you know, and they say, oh, you're so Airbnb gracious. is renting closets there for like 50 bucks a night. So to actually have an apartment to stay in with a relative is like, wow, great. So the other places they could stay weren't going to be $50 a night. So they saved quite a bit of money mm -hmm. by staying with the aunt. Now they got back and they had a wonderful time and they got back and then the friend sat down with uh, him and said, okay, so do a thank you gift. I'm thinking $200. What? Wait, a thank you gift. For a hostess gift? For, yeah, ho is that what you call it? A hostess, hostess gift? gift? Yeah, I mean, like when we've had people stay with us, they will send us flowers. Um, That's what this guy said, big when, goods. What if, your, got, auntie, what if your, your sister sent us this really pretty glass bowl that was gorgeous, I still Handwritten note, perhaps, yeah. some cookies. Yeah, this Something great. like that is like, hey, thank you. I'm not trying to refund you money um, they, for Putting, it, putting out. I don't understand. You know, Who told them that they had to pay $200 to get a hotel? That you don't kids, pay $200. The kids, the, the guy who's the, is the, the aunt. Did that his, guy. Did his extended family tell him that he had to do that or something? No, it just came up. And that's what he thought they should do. And, and so the question is, is that what you do? Do you go out and get something equal to $200? And by the way, baked cookies are worth $200. Uh, cookies, that's just oh, yeah. me. Um, no, but you what don't. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Who, who would even expect, if someone sent us a $200 gift for having them stay with us for I the would weekend, I would send, send it back. back. It's like, are you send kidding it back me? And say, screw you. No, You'll never stay here again. That's just awful, especially if it's a starving college student. Why on yeah. earth would you even think that well, would be a... You just go mull that over for a while and we'll see No, I really tomorrow. want your opinion on that. Am I off base or is that like just appalling? Because I, they I were, would never they, expect that. They were invited. Let me just say that. Yeah, it's not even like they called and said, hey, can we stay with Calm you? Calm down. You're getting all riled up. No, All right, so we'll rude. see you tomorrow on the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. No, seriously, I want to know because now okay, I'm ticked off. This Would is you... going to go for a while. Okay, no, is that appropriate? Is there anyone out there, though, that has ever done a $200 ho? Who would expect that from you? Are you turning off the lights? No, just, just, no I'm not finished no, here. Awesome. I just want to know if this is... Right. No, but it's just so rude. It's like, no, why would you good. even bother to, to host anyone? It's like, no, 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 just send me...